So check this out. Photogrammetry. I've gone through the 0 to 100, but I wanted to go through a short tutorial to show how I scanned these logs and how you could get both sides scanned in from a single object. Now I will say in the beginning, you have to be able to flip the object. So when I picked out these logs, I picked out logs that would stand on either side. If you don't have an object that will, that can be flipped easily, um, you might want to not try this with that kind of object. But if you can stand the object uh, on its opposite end or lay it flat, you might be able to do this. So let's go ahead and get started. So uh, first thing is looking at the actual looking at the actual pictures. Um, basically, if you just want to, if you if I could scan through these. I just start off at the bottom of the object and I just move the camera all the way up. Now I, I'm holding the camera in the uh, you know portrait position so I get more from shot to shot in the actual picture so you get a lot of overlap and then you gradually move up to the top. You don't want to jump right to the top. And you can see I just take little steps around this object. You know, this is a very simple setup. I was just out, out on a deck and uh, I've got a cooler down here. You can see there's like coffee stains or something on the cooler. Um, and then I'm just going all the way through the object, taking these pictures. And then what I do after that is I get all of those all the way around and then I do a second set of pictures. And the second set of pictures are um, when I flip the object, but you can see that they're upside down because in my editing program, I've already edited these. You can watch the uh, videos, the zero to 100 to see how I edit them. Um, but after I edit them, I, f I flip them uh, because the software reads that this better if it can, or I should say it aligns it easier if it can see that, you know, the points um, line up. So you don't get into any problems with that. Um, but I did take these the way I took the other ones. Now, if you might note that the flipped ones, I'm not getting the whole object. I'm just getting um, around the top. And then, of course, I get some uh, more of the actual top. So you can see I'm kind of angling the camera more at the top and then even more at the top and then all the way pretty much straight down but going in a circle. So you don't have to get the whole object when you do the flip side because you have the whole object with this. You've already got the whole object. You're just basically getting a bottom section and then the actual bottom uh, flat part. So that's all I'm getting. So you don't have to go through and take as many pictures. And in fact, if I go back in here, you can see there's 99 pictures in here. And in my... Um, my original one, there's 313. Now this is this is a lot of pictures. Um, you could probably get away with doing less, but I would rather have more, uh, just in case. You know, I'd rather have more overlap. So 313 pictures, 99. So we're at 400 something pictures. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get this going in AggieSoft. So we've got our chunk here, and we'll pull the pictures back up. This is the original side. So what I'll do is I'll just hit Control A and select all, and then I'll drive you know, these right into the chunk. I just drag them right in and give it a second because it's a lot of pictures. Um, let's turn that off so you can actually see the pictures down here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just align the photos on medium. So I'm just going to go like that. Um, the points down here, I turn these up a little bit because I just like to have it more defined, but the initial settings are fine, especially for this first pass. Uh, might go a little bit faster. Uh, I think the initial is like 40,000 and, and uh, 10,000 or something like that. So, um, but I'm just going to leave it like this and hit OK. And we got to do a little bit of waiting because I have so many pictures. This might take a few minutes. I don't know. It could be 10, 15 minutes or something like that. I'm not really sure. It depends on how fast your computer is, how fast your graphics card is. Uh, the faster it is, the faster this part will go. Uh, but I'll show you what I do right after this is done and just take a little break. Okay, so we got our log here, just the, you know, initial 
camera alignment and it took about two minutes and 40 seconds let me show you the cameras here so this is just the first group and you can see i've kind of got like this dome shape it's a bit overkill but you know that's how i roll uh, the first thing i like to do is i like to align this with the floor and you'll see why in a minute um, so i'm just going to move the object and i've gone over this in more specifics in my zero to 100 video for photogrammetry with Agisoft. So I'm just gonna go through it fast, but I'll say what I'm doing. First thing, I'm gonna hit five on my keyboard, which puts me in orthographic, and then I'm gonna hit one, which looks at a top view, and I can look for this little X right here that's on the grid. And I'm gonna go ahead and move the object. So I'm gonna go move object, and I'm gonna start sliding this over like so, and maybe a little bit like that. And then I'm gonna go and say rotate object. And I'll start to rotate it just, it looks like it's upside down. So I'm gonna rotate it all the way around, which means I might have to move it again. We'll see. I'm gonna go ahead and hit two, sorry, three on my keyboard. And oh no, I guess I did have it the right way. I rotated it the wrong way. Uh, I have my Y orientation going up uh, because most of the programs I use do Y up. So um, you can change that in some of the preference settings and uh, if you, you know, whatever program you're working with, like if you're working with Blender, the uh, Y is not up, the Z is up. So you may wanna change that. Um, I'll move this so it's kind of like that. Uh, I'll go back to hit one again. Let's see if I'm close to that little X mark, which is really hard to see. Let's see here. Yeah, we're pretty close, about right there. All right there, hit three again. And what I like to do is try to align the bottom with this grid. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say rotate object. And it's almost there, but uh, I'll try to be as exact as I can. And I just kind of go back and forth like so. There we go, that's pretty good. Um, move object and you know maybe just move that back just a tiny bit. Go back to the top view, which is one. And then what I like to do is I'll take this lasso here and I'm going to go ahead and lasso this whole thing. And so you can see that's all selected. And uh, if we look at this from a different point of view here, you can see we just have the block. Oh, we're missing a part of it. So it's a good thing I looked. So if you hold control and lasso again, you'll get the rest of it. Okay. So you just hold control, lasso again. And then what I'm going to do is just invert my selection. So I'll go invert selection in the edit menu and it grabs everything else. I don't need any of this stuff. So I'm just gonna hit this X, it gets rid of it. Um, hmm, must have grabbed that too. So we'll get rid of that too. Or not grab that, I should say. Uh, so, okay, so let's go ahead and hit one again. That looks pretty good. And the only reason why I get rid of these in the beginning, you, you don't really have to, um, but I like to be able to see what I'm working on. Uh, so it helps me just visually see what's going on. So we'll hit three, we'll look at this. Um, and, you know, you know, like I said, you don't have to get this precise, but you can. Okay, so this is good enough. I, you know, there's ways you can refine the camera alignment now, but I'm just gonna go through this really, really fast. So from this point here, I wanna adjust the region. So I'm gonna rotate the region. And I want the region to, to just be right around this block. So I'm going to rotate it first. So it's kind of aligned with the block, like so. And this is why I use orthographic because this, this is, you could tell whether or not it's aligned well. And then I'll go to um, resize region. And if you have the newest version of Agisoft, they put these little markers in here so it's easier to grab. So that's nice. And I'll do something like this. And actually I rotated it so it kind of went with the angle of the block, but now that I'm looking at it, um, actually I wanna cut the bottom off just a little bit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate this back like I had it, kind of like that so that this is going more straight. And then I'll just this line right here I want straight so it's kind of matching up with the grid and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit seven on my keyboard and it's gonna change the orientation 
So we're kind of looking from the side now down the looks like the Z and uh, I'll go ahead and then do a resize region from this angle like so. So we'll go like this. Now what this box will do is limit where this thing will actually build. Now I want to make sure I'm not cutting anything off because if there's anything that's outside of this box, it won't build. So I'll hit three again and I just look at my edges. That's fine. That's fine. I can hit one and I can see everything's in there. Some of this stuff will still be created like this bottom white part will still be created um, unless I cut, you know, unless I cut it off. Now, if you hit two, you can go ahead and rotate around and look at it that way. If you hit like seven to go into your side view and then you hit six, you can rotate around like this. You know, you could even hit two again. It'll rotate it up and down from whatever angle you're at. So, you know, it's easier to check like that. So I'll hit seven and then I can see that everything looks pretty good. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to like chop off the bottom just a tiny bit. So you can see that should be going through the bottom. I'm going to rotate So Maybe I can get this bottom a little bit more precise. It's not always easy because it doesn't always rotate exactly how you want it, but that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and resize and we'll just move it up just a little bit. So you want to just cut that bottom off. You don't need that. And you're going to patch that hole up. We're going to make masks from this, uh, like a low poly version of this. And then that way, when we build the bottom, we don't have to deal with any problems of the other side coming out with information. It'll all make sense in a minute. So now I'm ready to build the next part. So I'll go to build mesh. And this part I do uh, on medium. And then for the face count, I do another medium. Like so, this will go a little bit faster. And I just hit OK. And now it's a waiting game. It's going to not only build the depth maps that it uses for the mesh, but also the mesh all in one step. So this could take, it depends, again, it depends on your computer speed. But this could take, you know, an hour, two hours, a half an hour. It all depends on like your graphics card and computer speed. I'm going to guess, um, you know, maybe this will take about a half hour on my computer because it's only at medium. So, uh, yeah, we'll come back in a half hour and see the rest of it. Uh, get to see some other stuff I'm working on. Okay, so it only took a few minutes. Well, maybe more like six, seven minutes or something like that. It didn't take too long. Uh, it's 165,000 polys, roughly. Uh, all I'm using this for, like I said, is a mask. You can see that this is cut off. I'll turn it back to uh, the regular perspective view, which is by just hitting five, just so I can take a look at this and it looks good. So we can see this is what we come out with. And it's actually, it's not half bad for just, for just a quick build. And um, we'll go ahead and patch this hole up and then make the masks. So I'm going to go ahead and go to tools, mesh, close hole. And then I turn this to 99%. Uh, if you've done this right, this will just patch the bottom. So I'll hit OK. And then you can see it'll just be like this pink face that it puts on the bottom. So the reason why I want to do that is because when I go to the masking on these and put the mask in here, if you have the hole in the bottom, it will actually see through that. So I'll just come down here and click on the first picture and hit control A. It'll select all of them. I right click on top of one of them, go to masks, go to import masks, and then you want to do from model. So it's just going to take this model and and replacement. It's there's really no mask on there yet, but it's just going to, you know, do it on all of them. That's basically what that means. So and it says selected images. You could do all images too, but just selected images is fine. I could say okay. And then it's going to take a second and apply the masking from every single angle based on the cameras and stuff. So we'll just see what that looks like in a second. So if I hit this little mask button here, you can scroll through here and you can see everything is masked. Okay, so I can click that again just to get back to these normal views. And uh, at this point, I'm headed towards doing you know this exactly how I want. So I'll just do a save as and Let's see here. We'll go and name this this. 
So we'll go here, control V, say save. And we're good to go to the next step. It resets the view when you do that for some reason, but fine. Okay, so the next step is we're actually going to delete all the work we just did. So let's just go remove model. Yes. Depth maps. Yes. Tie points. Yes. Now these are all going to disappear. And then we just have the chunks uh, with the images. We'll open the images back up. And that we're now we're going to do is drop in the rest of the images. So let's go ahead and get those. We'll get the flipped ones. So these are all flipped. Control A, just select them all, drag them into the images, and minimize that. And now you'll have a bunch of these that say NA, which means not aligned. And then we go to workflow, align photos. Now I'm going to change a few things. Um, I'm going to change this to highest uh, because, I mean, it depends on how good you want this. If you want the best quality, you change it to highest. Um, I do want the best quality for this, so that's why I'm doing that. You have to make sure you have reset current alignment, so it's going to reset everything. And then uh, I'm also going to make sure that masks apply to key points. So you want to make sure that this is set to key points. Uh, if you're doing a highest, you know, like I said, I, I always use a little bit higher numbers here. Uh, one other thing too is you can actually rotate these images. So let me just cancel this for one second. If you didn't want to rotate these images in your post-processing software like Photoshop or whatever, uh, you can do it right here. So I can just go ahead and, you know, click these or click it back like so. So you can actually select all the new ones you brought in and just flip them. That's how I used to do it. Now, when I'm working on them, I just flip them so I don't have to think about it. But it's really just as easy to do it in here, maybe easier. So, OK, so let's just go back to where we were. Line photos, change this back to highest. Uh, make sure that the reset current alignment is set. Make sure the key points is set and hit OK. And now it's going to take everything and do them all together. But when it applies the mask to the first set that we had, um, what will happen is it will eliminate everything except for the wood block. And so it will really, the environment part will only come from the flipped photos. So uh, it, they won't interfere with each other. And it will just look at the details on the block on the regular upright piece. And then the flip one will look on the details of that. And it will do them all together. So now we, again, wait. All right, so here we go. I don't really know exactly how long this took. I would say at least double the amount of time because I had it on the highest settings and there's more photos. Uh, you could see that, you know, it's kind of reverse, which is fine. We'll just go ahead and rotate it. Again, hitting five, hitting three on my keyboard. And I can go ahead and get into rotating the object. So I just want to make sure one of the ends is basically flat on the floor. In my case, I have it pointing in the Y direction. So I'll move the object like so. And just because I'm particular, I'll rotate it a little bit more like so. Move it again. And this doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, sometimes I like to try to do or overdo things. So that's just me. Okay, so we'll go like that. And I like to clean it up just like I did with the last one. So I'm just going to select all of that, do an inverse. And I like to just look at this like I did before, make sure I didn't select anything. Yep, that's pretty good. So I can just kill all those. Pull back a little bit here. So that's pretty good. So, um, you know, you could get into cleaning all this up, but I'm pretty sure that it's going to be fine. Let's get our region. Uh, the region is important to get right because it limits what the program will actually try to solve. 
So if you get the region really tight, then you're going to spend all of your resources on the parts that count. And you're going to avoid spending resources on the parts that don't count. So in this case, because I'm not worried about cutting off the bottom, I could take this region and rotate it so it fits us a little bit better. Although, actually where I have it's probably fine. We could do it like that, just leave it there. Tighten that up a little bit, tighten that up a little bit, hit seven. Go from the other view, tighten that up, tighten that up. And so we'll get a little bit of the cooler that was on the bottom right here. Uh, but I'll just cut that off when we're, well, it might, it might not. We'll see. Let's see here if we kind of look at it from the three point of view again. Might want to scroll in tighter. I'm looking, there's like these two little, you can see there's, it's not perfectly aligned, but it's close. So as long as these are below. And same thing over here, as long as these are not touching where you see all these points conglomerated, you should be good. So there, and then we can come in here and tighten this up just a little bit more. Something like that. Not a bad idea to look at the top and maybe Hit two to roll around. Just make sure you don't see anything poking out. You can go ahead and hit six. Roll it this way. So if I wanted to, I could I could actually come into here and from the top view, I could probably rotate this and try to fit it better, but I think it's gonna be fine. So now we're gonna go ahead and build the mesh. And at this point, I'm gonna change this to ultra high and custom and if it's at zero it'll build it as high as it can now i'm going to warn anybody who's doing this um if you uh if you don't have a fast enough computer uh, don't build it at this high i just realized that my white card pictures are in here i'm going to get rid of those those should not be in there even though they aligned must have had enough points around it that the uh that it could see it, but I'm gonna get rid of these. You could just right click over these and say, uh, remove images, there it is. Yes, it should still be fine. It's just gonna keep the alignment with everything else. Let's look at the cameras really quick before I do this, just so we can kind of get a glimpse. We'll hit five so we can see what it should look like. Let's look at the cameras. So you could see, I was a bit closer uh, when I did the other side, which for detail, that can be good, but you, the closer you are to your object, the less depth of field you get from your actual, you know, your camera and your F-stop, whatever your F-stop set at. So sometimes it's not always great to be too close. Uh, you know, obviously the higher your resolution is, the further away you can be. Uh, so that's, it's helpful, but, um, I mean, you could see how this is kind of circular going all the way around, almost looks like a dome going all the way around. So that's work, that works. Okay, so we're ready and we'll just go workflow, build mesh and ultra high, custom. And this part, you know, depending about the speed of your computer, sometimes this can take all night. Uh, if you don't have a really, really fast computer or a lot of RAM, I would uh, set this to high and high here and just stick with those but i have 120 gigs of ram and an 18 core i9 extreme and a really fast uh i have a gt what is it rtx sorry there are rtx's now rtx uh 4080 so i have a pretty beastly machine so it can handle it so we just do this we'll probably have to wait you know maybe an hour and a half or something i don't know how long but i'll come back when it's done all right all right, so here we have the results a few hours later, and we have 66 million polygons. It's or faces. It says it's a bit obscene, but what the heck? We can do it, so we do it. So anyway, um, obviously you can see tons of detail. Lovely, lovely. All right, so let's get on to the next part of this. 
which is where I will make a decimated model and make this something that we could actually use. So we're going to go to mesh. We're going to go to decimate mesh. Um, 25,000 is what I'm using right now. So I'll say OK. And it says, do you want to replace the default model? And the answer is no. Then we'd have to go through a bunch of work. But I did save before I started the video back up. So I could just reopen the file. But who wants to do that? Now, I really like the decimation tool in this program in AggieSoft Metashape. It is actually really, really fast if you compare it to, let's say, ZBrush, which I'll show some stuff in ZBrush in a, in a minute or two. But uh, ZBrush's decimation tool would probably be choking for, I don't know, at least a half hour on this mesh. Whereas this thing will do it, uh, where are we at? 35 seconds and it's almost done. So it'll complete in a second. And then I'm going to show two options for unwrapping this one here in AggieSoft and one in ZBrush. So uh, we'll go to that in a second. So there we go. Okay. So here's our decimated mesh. And this is still, you know, it's a pretty darn defined shape. Um, obviously, it doesn't look like the other one did, but it's really, really good. So if you don't want to clean up and have really good UVs, the easiest way to do, uh, you know, the texturing part of this would be just to go to workflow, uh, build texture. And let's start off with um, the diffuse map. So we have the diffuse map, which will project from the images. And then I'm just going to leave it at 8192. And this will unwrap it automatically for us. You know, there's this, uh, you know, there's different kinds of unwrapping you can do, but usually I just use the uh, generic and I'll just say, okay. Um, it'll take a few minutes. Maybe it'll go faster. I don't know. We'll see. But usually it'll take a few minutes and it'll unwrap this, but it's not really a great, you know, optimized unwrap. I'm trying to get through these assets rather fast, but I still like to have, you know, the unwrap a little bit better than what AggieSoft Metashape does. So we'll just wait and come back. All right, so here we go. It took about three minutes or so to unwrap, and you can see it looks almost identical to the high poly now that we have just the diffuse texture on this. Um, of course, I could use this if I wanted to. If we want to bake other things out of here, we can go build texture and I can change this to normal map and then it will automatically change to the 3D model uh, because you're going to project the normal map from the 3D model. Uh, I'm, I may do my baking in here. However, I will say that when you go to bake the occlusion map, this program does the occlusion map really, really slow. So you're going to have to wait a good amount of time to get that occlusion map to uh, come out. The normal map's not too bad. And the displacement maps may be a little bit slower than a normal map. I'm not 100% sure. But that occlusion map can take a bit. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is show how to export this. So we're just going to go export. Um, we could do export model. And I'll pick the location, which is this one. This is the right one. Oops. I just want to grab the name here. And then what I like to do is I'll put on there 25K afterwards so I know what I'm exporting out. Also save. And uh, because I'm not going to use this, I'll just export a JPEG. I don't need the vertex colors, although if I do, if I want to export the high poly, I may use a vertex color. So I would check that on. So I'm going to say OK. And now that I look at that, let's see something really quick here. Uh, I just want to go ahead and see save alpha channel, use UDIM texture layout. Oh, no, OK. I just wanted to make sure that I had that the UVs will come out. So I have that exported and I can go ahead and open ZBrush now. Okay, so I'm in ZBrush and I'm going to show how I do my UV layout. It's kind of a fast, dirty way to do it, but it works. So if 
for an object like this, I think it's just fine. So I'll go ahead and open this. And then I just left click and drag. So it comes out and then I just hit edit right away. If you for some reason left click and drag and get this kind of thing going on, just hit control N to clear it. Left click and drag again and make sure you hit edit right away. And you can click outside of here and you can see, you know, the mesh. And you can see it looks pretty, pretty well defined. So uh, I'm going to leave it in orthographic mode and I'm going to start masking stuff. So I'll hold control and go into here and go to my lasso mask. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask the top and bottom and certain sides off so that I get different poly groups. So um, what I'll do is just go like this and do something like that. It looks like it got most of it, but I may have missed some. So I'll do it again. Keep holding control and then something like that. OK, so I want to have just the top mask. And if I got too much, then I'll undo my poly group and redo it. So I'll sit, hit group mask and then you want to turn on your poly frame and you can see what you got. So I missed a couple spots here, so that's where I would undo it and maybe maybe go at a different angle like this i'll hold control and then go like that now that will mask through things so we'll unmask the parts over here and then i'll do the same thing over here hold control and just use this lasso to get all the parts I need. I think I might have missed the part there. Okay, so now the reason why I go at that angle is because all the, the parts I want to unmask are way down here. So then if you want to unmask, you hold Control and Alt at the same time and then just draw this out like so. And then we can go ahead and just hit Group Mask again. And you'll see what you get. So that's pretty good. Um, Undo, it looks like I missed a spot on masking. So Control and Alt, unmask that. Let's hit Group Mask again. I don't like that it keeps giving me like the same kind of color. I'm actually gonna change this to this color so it's easier to see, just the skin shaded. And go ahead and yeah, that looks good. I don't have anything masked that I don't want. And then what I'm gonna do is hold Control and Shift and click on this and then hold control and shift and click one more time and it hides it. And so now I can start working in these other sections. So I'm gonna just hold control and swipe outside and that will unmask everything. So we can go here and we can just work on the next part. Okay, so hold control. So yeah, I use the straight edge, you know, of the, uh, of the lasso to get that part right there. And that looks pretty good. And I just realized I forgot a step that some people might run into when they're doing this back in AggieSoft, um, which uh, I'll go over in a second. Actually, I don't want to forget. So let me just jump back here really quick. Um, if you have any straggler polygons that are around that you don't want, uh, like there's just like there could be like a little section of polygons like off to the side. Go to tool, I'm sorry, not tools, model, gradual selection, and then go to connected component site size. And then this, I don't think this has any problems like that. So I don't, I don't really have to do this, but if there was, you go to the comp uh, connected component size and hit 99. So it'll get like 99% except for the largest um, group of polygons, which is the main piece and hit okay. And I'm pretty sure it didn't, get anything but maybe it did let's see oh yeah six so there's six faces selected so that's all that was the only little problem so i'm gonna hit delete i'll delete those six faces um so you know that that's something you may want to do uh i'm not going to worry about doing it in the zbrush part so um it, it'll be okay uh there might be like a little you know tiny island or something that i missed or whatever but it'll be okay this will still stand. I would I would usually do that first though. Um, okay, so I've got that masked. I'll hit group masked and take a look and I can see I missed just a couple little parts here. So undo 
And then I'm going to go ahead and just mask this part off by hand carefully. And I think this and maybe a little bit more there. And I think this might have been a problem too. So you kind of just get in there. And then um, I can come back over here. And I know I probably masked off to the bottom or something. So control and alt and just basically do something like that. If you deselect your mask when you do that control and alt, that means you didn't have anything selected or you didn't deselect anything back here. That means you didn't have anything masked. So I'll go ahead and hit group mask again. And uh, I still want to get these little parts right here. So what you have to contain the vertices. So basically some of these vertices are not contained. Oops, I hit the wrong button. I was holding Control and Alt. So once I contain those vertices, then they'll they'll turn dark, and then it fade it fades off. But these are not actually selected. So now you can see this is the part where I went and selected through. So I'll go like that, deselect that, hit Group Mast. I should probably do more. Yeah, let's just do the whole thing just to be sure. Okay, so we do that. Now everything's deselected, group masked. Um, you can see I missed one little part on top, right there. So Control Z. Okay, group masked, and there we go. Yep, that looks pretty good. I can live with that being part of the sides. So now I hold Control and Shift again. Click on this and it'll hide it. Hold Control, swipe outside. That will deselect the mask. And what I do now is I usually cut off the bark part and I'll probably cut off like one side of this. So I'm just separating these things out uh, so I can do like a, a an automatic unwrap and I can do it by those poly groups. So it'll just break off those sections. Uh, otherwise, ZBrush will do some really weird stuff trying to unwrap this, and this just gives me more control. So what I do here usually, and th this part can take a little bit of time if, you know, depending on how exact you want to be, but what I can do is hold control and go something like this. And then now all that stuff is masked, you know, and then I'm just getting the edges and then after I get the edges, I'll go in and select the whole center. It just makes it easier to do. So I'll do the same thing again. I'll start off like right here, hold control, and uh, maybe right here, like that. So I'm just trying to get the areas that are just the bark. Kind of helps me separate this thing into logical chunks. This is, um, you know, this can be seem a little tedious, but trying to do this in like Maya or some other 3D package might take a lot longer because you have to go in and select all the edges and then split the edges and stuff like that. So while this is a bit tedious, it's probably not as bad as that. <laughs> this, this is coming from experience. Uh, let's see, oh no, I had it right. So you have this little bar up here. You can just slide that back. That's also your undo history. So I can go like that. It looks like this part right here is being a little bit stubborn. So I'm going to go like that. And then I'll come over here and unmask this. And there we go. That should work. OK. So yeah, you can see that's mostly all uh, just bark. And again, we have this part right here that didn't get selected. So I can come over here and unmask that. So if you've never used ZBrush before, it does have like this kind of weird interface, um, but I've been using it since like ZBrush 2, which I think it was about 2005 or so um, and 
it's just practice. And once you get used to it, it actually like a lot of the stuff makes sense. There's still some stuff I, I think could be a lot better in the interface, but it's still like, it has a lot of positive parts to it too, that you don't really realize like, Oh, why would they do this? You know? Well, when you use it long enough and <laughs> you just get a lot of experience with it, it's like, Oh, that makes sense. Cause now I can do this with one keystroke versus, you know, five or whatever. Um, so again, just going through and you gotta get, kind of get the right angle sometimes. Otherwise this can be tricky. Um, uh, let's see here. Just trying to avoid grabbing stuff that I don't want. Here we go. That's a good one. So I'll go ahead and just kind of mask like this, go all the way through here. And the more you do these type of operations with the masking, the more experience you get and it becomes a lot easier. Um, at first it's, it's sort of a pain. So bear with it. You know, if you're going to do anything that's worthwhile, it might take a little bit of time to learn it. So let's see what we got here. See this right here. I can tell there's a little spot right there, which means I'm just selected something out here. So I'll go ahead and just unmask that really quick. I could probably just wait to the end and unmask all the other stuff, but so, you know, I don't like to, I, I'm afraid of missing parts. So if I know that I just selected through something and it's gonna be on the other side, a lot of times I'll just do it right away. And then we just check it, group masked, and we can look at this. Okay, there's one little piece there that's no good. And everything else looks pretty good. So let's just undo that, control C. So we must have grabbed something right here that we didn't want and hit group masked and there we go. So now that's good. Control shift, click on it. Uh, wait, let me see one last thing here. Like I said, you don't have to get too persnickety about this, but since I'm since I'm, uh, this is like my final log for a project that I'm setting up. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and make you bear with me here. And let's hit group asked. Yeah, that's, that's good. That'll work. doesn't have to be perfect, but, but sometimes, you know, sometimes you take a little extra time. Okay. So now we've got these, these two different halves, basically. Um, this is a little tricky area because it protrudes. So that might be a little bit weird for the UVs. Um, so what I think what I'm gonna do is just, this This is where it gets easy, typically just because you only have a little bit left. So I just mask like that, that could be okay. Um, you know, if you wanna make it more straight, you're more than welcome. If you wanna go at just like at the corners and, and do it that way, you're welcome to do that too. Um, you know, now that I'm looking at this, like, it may make sense. I can inverse the mask, by the way, by just um, holding control and clicking outside, you can inverse the mask. Uh, it may make sense to actually do something like this where I just kind of go around this circle here because of the way that protrudes and go like that. And then do the rest of this kind of like this. So I'm gonna start here. Uh, actually, let's do this. We'll go this way. And just let go. And we've got that part figured out. And actually, that's probably pretty good because that's a, kind of a weird little section there that might um, cause the UVs to have to break a little bit. Uh, ZBrush is going to kind of automatically break some of the UVs apart that are hard to figure out. So, um, the more I can help it being that I've done a lot of UVs in my time, I know, um, where it would need to have this help. And like this area right here is like one of those areas that would need the help. Um, so I'm just giving it that help without it having to do it. Um, this part that's right there, uh, if I can't get to it, I can hold control, go back to my original, um, my original dots, right? Like this. And this gives you a marquee, like so, if you're outside of the mesh, I'm gonna undo that. But if you're on the mesh, 
uh, you can actually hold Control and Alt, and it will let you paint. But my draw size is a little bit big, so I'm going to make my draw size a little smaller, and then I'm going to paint this out just by hand. Maybe turn the poly frame off so it's easier to see. So we can do something like that. So then now, hopefully that'll be pretty good. Let's see, how much should I get there? Nah, that wasn't a good one. We can just go back to the lasso and like lasso that a little bit right there so it doesn't get the rest of it. That's probably good. Okay, we'll see what this looks like. Group mast. And you have to put your poly frame back on if you're gonna see it. And yeah, that's pretty good, except for I think I want this little part there too. So undo. And we'll just go in there and make sure that vert gets included. Like so. Group masked. And that looks pretty good. I like that. Let's make sure. Yep, it's all good. Okay, hold control and shift, hide that part. Now I like to group this one too, so I'll, I'll go ahead and just, oops, hold control, mask it all, group masked. And then if I hold control and shift and click outside of the mesh, it'll go ahead and just um, bring everything back. And again, control shift, it isolates that one part, but if you hit it again, it hides it. So, you know, that's how you can do that. It's again, it's a little confusing when you're first starting in ZBrush, but then after a while, it makes a lot of sense. Um, Okay, so we're going to go to the next part, which is I'm going to open up the plugins, just click on this little circle that's in the corner. It'll dock it off to the side. We want the UV master. Uh, I'm going to work on clone. What it's going to do is it's going to bring up this object. Uh, it's a clone of the object. The original's actually still, if I click on here, this is the original. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and turn off symmetry, turn on poly groups, and then just hit unwrap. And this thing, you'll see it, yep, it did it really, really fast. That was easy. Now we can hit flatten. And this is what the layout looks like. As you can see, it's split, you know, in a couple spots, uh, probably because ZBrush couldn't, like, resolve a relaxation or uh, unfolding of this area properly. Uh, so it split that, and then it just went ahead and uh, split in a couple other parts, too, probably for the same reason. Um, but the rest of the stuff turned out pretty good, especially the top and bottom look good. And we can just say unflatten. That's the, now this is the model ready to go. Now you can hit copy UVs. And if you want, you can go back to your original and paste the UVs on. But we can actually just export this. So I can say export and export right over the original. Say save. Yes, sir. And then we can go back to AggieSoft. And I actually don't need this one right here anymore because I'm just going to re-import the one that I put the UVs on. So I'm going to go ahead and just right-click and say Remove Model. Yes. And then I'm going to say File, Import, Import Model. And then we'll grab that. And we do want to load the textures. It shouldn't be a UDIM layout, but well, it's in within the zero to one UDIM. Uh, okay, so here we go. Here's the model now. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go build textures and we'll do the diffuse map and it'll it's gonna use the exact same projection of the cameras and it'll just take a hot second. While we're doing that, I'm gonna go into here and show you what the UV layout looked like that uh, AggieSoft did. So you can see, like, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's all segmented apart and it's hard to figure out what you're doing. So if you're going to bring this into like Substance Painter or something like that, you need to fix stuff or you wanted to give it some different qualities. Uh, this is, I mean, it's just hard to look at and know what you're, what you're hitting exactly. Whereas the other one, it's, it's sectioned off into logical pieces. So anyway, um, but if you're if you just like want a quick model out, you could just do it right in AggieSoft. It's it's no big deal. And it's doing the projection, so I'll pause and we'll come back. Okay, so it took about two two and a half minutes to bake this back out. And now I'm gonna do something which is probably superfluous for this 
tutorial, but I'm going to show you baking this in a different program. Um, a program that will actually be able to handle the high poly. So I'm going to go ahead and say export, and I'm just going to export one texture. So, and I like to do is a PNG. They're a little bit larger, but they're better quality. So we still have that. And I just pasted the name in, and I'm going to go ahead and just say save. And you can pick different maps in here if you have the other maps uh, baked out. And if you, again, if you want to do that, just go back into workflow and pick which, uh, which map you want baked out. The reason why I'm going to do the other maps in this other program is because it's just so much faster than doing it in Metashape, um, especially the ambient occlusion. I mean, it's, it's near instantaneous uh, because it uses the GPU to bake out the textures. So there you go. I've got that out. We can bring this back up and look at it. And there you go. So you could see this is just way cleaner than what we would have gotten out of Metashape. So, okay, we'll close that. I already have the model uh, in a good place, but what I don't have is the high poly model. And um, because I'm doing a high poly and I'm just trying to get the normals and the, uh, the ambient occlusion, I might decimate this I could export this out it would it would be really really big uh, and the other program will it will take it uh, but it just makes sense I don't I don't know if I really need it although you know what I did all the other ones at the high poly level so okay I'm lying I'm gonna do it the high poly just because uh, it'll keep everything consistent um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just save one that's called 66 mil like I said, I stay organized. Now this is a, gonna be a huge file. So when I'm done with this, I don't really need it because it's stored in Metashape. So I'll just delete this OBJ off. I don't need the vertex colors because I already have that figured out. I want the normals. Um, and so that's perfect. Uh, we don't really need the color. It doesn't actually have a color map. You're actually looking at vertex colors on this now. So it's basically each point is assigned a color based on the maps that were projected to it, um, which only work if you have like a ton of points. It's where you could actually bake from this too. The, the color can be baked from this, but it only works good if you have like 66 million points. But if you only have like 25,000 points, it's gonna look all blurry. So I just said, okay, it's gonna take a few minutes because it is fantastically large. All right, so seven minutes and 30 seconds it took to export a 5.6 gigabyte obj file massive all right well the program i was talking about is called marmoset tool bag i've actually had this for a long long time it's fantastic for real-time visualization but it's also they put bakers in here and this is an older version they this is three there they have a newer version it's got you can do 3d painting and a bunch of other stuff now um, that I can't do in this one, but uh, I've got the baking thing, so that's cool. Uh, but the first thing I'll do is just do a file import and I'll find that uh, model here. So we'll go to the 66 million. Oh, actually let's do the, this one's faster. So we'll say open and you can see it just comes in instantly. Um, I usually delete the, the material that it comes in with. It looks kind of light because um, it's just the lighting in here. It looks like I'm, there might be a fog on or something. I don't know what's going on. It's really, really white. Um, but it, this is great. You know, it's got built-in uh, skies and stuff like that. Oh yeah, that's that's why we can change the sky preset. You know, to all kinds of different stuff, or you can put in your own if you like. Let's do this one. Okay, so then the next thing we want to do is import the model and this can take a hot second so we will wait for it <laughs> all right that that was a while it took a while to import um i don't even want to say how long I, I didn't really test it but uh or i didn't look at the time so i don't know but i've got them both in here the one that's the solid one is the really high poly so we have to do is go up to new baker here uh, and we just click on that 
And then you have to drag the high poly, which would be this one, into the high, or right under the high right there. And then you drag the low into the low right there. So it's uh, you know kind of nested into it. And then you just go up to the baker and you just have to set up what you're gonna bake. So um, first of all, let's get the output and we'll get the right spot. This is good. We'll call it log. Well, actually, I think I still have that in there. Yep, there we go. And we'll just say underscore like that, hit okay. And we can pick what we want. Uh, so I, I obviously want normals, I want ambient occlusion. Um, and there's other, there's other ones that you can pick. So uh, let's see here. Now I will say I don't, I try not to use this if I don't have to, but in so many, you know, there's so many uh, projects that I do with photogrammetry that they're just huge and this is so much faster. Um, you can do the height. I actually haven't had the best of luck with the height in here. And I, I found that the one in Agisoft works a little bit better. Uh, let's see here. If the ver <laughs> I can't figure out how to get the vertex normal or colors to work right, so I don't even export them anymore. Um, but you know, you're supposed to be able to do that from the vertex colors here. Um, I I wasn't able to get it to work for some reason. I think. Well, let's just do. I got the curvature there. Um, that should be good. I don't think anything else. Yeah, we'll we'll say done. So we'll just we'll hit the curvature as well, just in case we ever need that. Uh, so if I bring in a substance, the curvature curvature is pretty important. Oh, there was one other one that I should get is the position map. Uh, let's see here, just in case I ever need it. So let's put the position in there. That bakes really fast. And then I want my samples. I'm going to turn it up to 16, so I get a little bit more samples. And pretty much that's it. You know. Oh, let's uh, let's turn this up to. Uh, 8192 and we'll do the same thing over here 8192 okay now say done with that and we just hit bake and you give it a second and it will do its thing um it's really incredibly fast so i'll actually look at the time Okay, so within a minute and a half, it it did all of them except for the ambient occlusion, and then it took about another two and a half minutes to do the ambient occlusion, which is pretty normal. Um, those type of things take a lot longer. Uh, I can double click on the AO just so we can see that, and actually probably should show you some of the other maps uh, just so you can get a look at them. Okay, so the ambient occlusion map, if you don't know what it is, it's basically, um, it's going to put shadows where light would have a hard time hitting because there's crevices. So uh, that's where you could see like all these different crevices. Yeah, and, and it just adds a little bit more realism, but it's not at the cost of having to render it like every frame if you actually put this onto the model. Uh, so some of the other maps, uh, let's see what the normal map looks like. So this is what's going to give you your detail. And that's all the different, uh, the, the higher poly normal that you get from the uh, high poly that bakes onto the lower poly surface. So here we got the, um, the curvature. And this is basically like going to highlight on the edges where there's basically like a direction change. You know, if, if it turns 90 degrees or something like that, it's going to show that off so you can see all the little highlights. And this helps in if you're working in like substance, um, it helps put details in certain areas. And then, of course, we have the uh, the position, which just tells where this position is in the world. So if you're like in substance and you want to use some kind of um, you know, weathering that starts at the top and then goes towards the bottom or something like that. It, it, it will define where the top and bottom are based on these colors. Okay, so back into uh, Metashape, or I'm sorry, I'm in uh, 
uh, marmoset, which you don't really need to see this part, but I will show you the next part just because this is how I look at my, my work to see how it, it looks. I'm going to open my campfire scene. I don't need to save this. I'm not really going to, you know, need this for anything else. So I'll just go ahead and uh, tell it not to save. And the, the next part should save pretty soon, but it's probably dumping a bunch of <laughs> memory or something right now. I don't know what it does behind the scenes. Um, okay, so this is what we originally were looking at. And so then what I would do is just say import model, get that 25K, say open. Uh, you can see it came in right here in the center of the world. So that's good. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and I think this is its uh, texture. I'm going to delete that. Yeah. So it just puts the next one. I'll hit plus to get a new texture. And when I drag this in, um, it has all these groups based on the polygroups. Um, but what I want to do is just drag this on the top level and it puts it on everything. And then I go in and I'll just I'll drop the normal map first so you can see how powerful a normal map is. So we'll just put that there and bada bing. So like now this thing looks like really detailed just from having that. That's what the surface de detail looks like. You can turn it on and off and just see how much better that looks. And then of course we have the, uh, the roughness. I, I usually make a roughness map, but I'm gonna just turn the roughness up a little bit in here so it's more rough because wood typically is more rough. And then we'll go ahead and put the uh, the color map, which is right here. We got that from MaggieSoft. And there you go. And definitely not enough roughness yet. So there's too much shininess on the surface. Um, so there's that. And then uh, I didn't do the height map because with, with this much detail in the logs, you don't really need a height map, uh, just the uh, normal map. And I'll turn on the occlusion and then I'll add in the occlusion map as well. And you can see what happens here. And there it just gives it kind of a more like realistic shadow look to it. And so, you know, you can turn this thing. This is a real time viewer, but it's really like a advanced real time viewer. It's almost like having Unreal for just looking at your assets. I mean, I could do this in Unreal as well. Uh, this just sets up a lot faster and it bakes. So there you go. Anyway, that's it. That's the whole process. It's been about an hour. So if you bear with me for this entire hour, thank you. Um, and, uh, you know, happy baking and stuff like that. So um, again, you don't need to use any of the extra programs other than like Metashape and Photoshop. You can get by with just those two programs to do all this stuff. But, uh, you know, just having a few extra tools will give you better results. Uh, so anyway, Thanks for watching, and uh, if you look in the uh, description, you can see a link to my photogrammetry 0 to 100, so if you need more tips on just getting started in photogrammetry and different things about the camera uh, and things that cameras can do, uh, there's I specifically go over a specific camera, which is a, uh, I just said specific twice, um, which is a Sony a7R III. Uh, you could completely skip that part if you don't have that camera, but you can watch it just to see how I set my camera up to do photogrammetry um, and some of the things that I do within that camera to help me get better results. So anyway, uh, appreciate you watching and have a great day.